This is Tyler Faulkner with Carlson Software. This video series is going to provide an overview of the geology module. This is in no means a all-inclusive training video. There will be many other parts of the geology module that you may need to use for your project, but this should at least give you a good overview, give you an idea of where you might need to take your project. This video is also not going to be an introduction to basic use of AutoCAD or IntelliCAD. There are many other resources available, so this does assume that you have at least an initial understanding of how to use AutoCAD for basic drafting, layer management, things like that. Now one of the things that I find very helpful when learning the software program is to have a flow chart of major steps that you're going to take and kind of keeping your end goal in mind, which is what we're looking at here. This flow chart is going to show many of the topics that we're going to cover in the next few videos. These will be divided into smaller chunks, but what we're looking at here is just essentially the steps that we're going to work through for most projects with the end goal being mine planning. So we can't really plan out our mine until we have a good geologic model and an understanding of what's in the ground. Now for anything that we're seeing in here, if the text is written in black, it's just a generic action, not necessarily something that you do in Carlson. Whereas if it's a blue piece of text, that's the name of a specific command. So that'll kind of help guide you through the process here. So for starting off, we are going to jump into the program. I'll refer back to this flow chart periodically. But just to get the program started up, assuming that you already have the program installed, we're going to find the icon on your desktop that looks like a little coal cart. Here we can see I'm going to be using Carlson Mining 2020, and I'm also using AutoCAD Map 3D 2020. I'll double click the icon. This will launch the program. So now that the program is opened up, I do want to talk quickly about some interface settings that you won't normally have with just base AutoCAD, primarily just being a few extra toolbars specific to Carlson that I find very, very helpful working on really any project. Now some of these toolbars should already be available. For example, the Carlson Menus toolbar, these icons shown up here. This is what allows us to navigate between the various Carlson modules, uh, specifically geology, underground mining, surface mining, etc. There's a few others I'll show as well, uh, but if you can't see this Carlson Menus toolbar, the way you can turn that on is to right click anywhere in the toolbar area. You'll go to the Carlson group. You'll find the Carlson Menus toolbar, and if it has a check mark next to it, it means it is being displayed. Otherwise, you can check it on and add that to the top or the side of the program, wherever you like. There's at least two other toolbars that I do recommend, one of them being the Layers toolbar. Now, this is different from the AutoCAD or IntelliCAD layers, where the AutoCAD layer toolbar shows you various layers, allows you to turn them on and off. The Carlson layers toolbar it's not based on a drop-down. These are just commonly used commands for freezing layers, turning layers on, erasing layers, things that I use all the time. Another toolbar that you may want to turn on is the surface toolbar, shown here. This has quick commands for creating a new surface, viewing a surface, contouring a surface, inspecting it. A lot of very good tools in there. Now I also have a custom toolbar that I've created, so if you have your own toolbars you can uh, create those and just have your most commonly used commands just ready to go. And one of the next things that I want to talk about is my data that I'm going to be using for this video. So I've got a folder on my desktop here just called training. Take a look at what we have in here. This is just a drawing file, an Excel sheet, and the flowchart that we looked at a moment ago. Um, I'm going to be adding a lot of data to it. This is just showing we're starting off as about as simple as we can get. To open that file, I could either double click on the file itself or I can jump back into the program. I can go to File, Open. 
And before I move forward, it's actually worth talking about this dialog a little bit. Uh, this is different from just your normal Windows file selection. We give you a few extra tools in here just to help you find files quickly, keep them organized, things like that. First of all, I have the folder dropdown. So this is the folder that I'm currently looking inside of, see Carlson Projects, but that's not where my drawing is saved. If I need to go find the drawing, um, I can hit the down arrow here. This will show me my recently used project folders. And I can actually see one right there, C Desktop Training. That's where my file is saved. And I can see it right here. So whatever folder I have selected, this is where the files that can be opened will show up, all the files in that folder. If I don't see my project folder in this dropdown, I can also hit Browse. And that will show me kind of the more simple, um, traditional Windows file selection. So I have my file selected here, and when it's highlighted, I can actually see a preview of that file. Different types of files will display different information down here. Some of them may be a actual image showing what the file looks like. Others just may be a text preview of what's in that file. Two other areas to point out. Uh, down here we have the recent files, so this will show me any files that I've used recently, um, and this is not controlled by the current folder that I'm looking in. So even if I change the current folder that I'm looking in, my recent files are still showing up here. Now another area that I can see is my subfolders. Now, I don't currently have any subfolders in this project, but if I did, those would be showing up here. We're going to make some of those here in just a minute. But let's go ahead and get this drawing opened. I can either double click on it here or I can click on it once and click open. So the drawing's open. Again, just uh, some very basic information in this drawing. You can see I do have a 3D aspect of this. I can orbit around like this by holding down the shift key and my middle mouse button to pan in 3D. There's not too much in the drawing. As I can see here on the AutoCAD Layers toolbar, I have my zero and depth points layer. That will show up in a lot of base drawings. Uh, but I also just have some contours and a boundary running around the contours. So not too much in here. So I mentioned uh, the project folder. And the project folder is generally going to be wherever the drawing is actually saved. So this training folder, that's going to be my project folder. Anything else that I'm going to save, it's going to be very handy to keep things in this training folder. Um, but if we put everything in one folder, it's going to get messy very quick. So what I always do for my projects before I get too deep into them, I like to make a couple of subfolders. It's just with standard Windows commands. And I like to make a folder for all the settings for the various commands I'm going to be using. And I also like to make a subfolder for my surfaces. That'll be grids and tins that might represent the topography, they might represent the thickness of a strata layer, anything like that. You can make as many or as few as you need to, just whatever makes sense for you and your coworkers or your classmates or whoever you might be corresponding with on your project. So that has our project folder set up. Uh, the drawing's already been saved for us. But one of the first things I'm going to do with any project is just do a basic drawing setup. Um, so these are just going to be some basic CAD settings that um, kind of tell us some very important things about the drawing. And to get to that drawing setup, I'm going to go to my pull down menus. Uh, very important not to confuse the pull down menus with the ribbon tabs. This is a common thing that people will do as they're just trying to get used to the interface. If you have this ribbon, these very large icons commonly used things, the ribbon has ribbon tabs. Personally, I'm not a big fan of using the ribbon. I like to close that ribbon and just use the pull down menus. So any command I show you in these videos, I'll try to stick to the pull down menus. I find those are easier to get back to, easier to navigate when you're not sure of where something is. 
So basic drawing setup, I'm going to go to my settings pull down menu and the first command there is drawing setup. So I'll take a look at some of the things in here and there's really only two or three things that I regularly change in here or at least inspect and the main one being probably the most important that just being the units that we are going to use for this drawing. So I am going to be using English units as opposed to metric. If I click here on the English units, I will get a notification um, asking me if I want to adjust all my other settings to match that selected system. We're always going to say yes to that. Uh, otherwise, we might end up with some mixed up units. So I'll say yes to that. And the other main thing that I set when I'm getting my project started is the coordinate system. So where this project is actually going to be located. So I can change my projection here. I can pick some of the more commonly used ones. Uh, if you don't see a projection that you need to use, you can define your own as well. Um, so I could pick that projection. Say we're going to do a state plane 83. And then I could pick the zone. So if I was in northern Colorado, I could pick that. Now it's very important to know that changing the projection in the zone, it's not going to move or scale anything in the drawing. So we can do this at the very beginning of the project, we can do it at the very end, it doesn't matter. Um, and for a lot of projects, if you're just working local coordinates, you do not have to set a projection. This would only be useful if you're going to geo-reference information such as an aerial image or some contours, um, anything like that. So for now, I'm just going to say I don't have a projection and we're just going to say okay here. There's other settings we could work with, but that's going to be fine for now. So with that, we've done some just the first basic steps here for getting our project started. Uh, mainly just getting our project folder defined for us. We've done some basic drawing setup. Now we're ready to move on to the next topics, which we will cover in the next video.